All right, you gotta be sworn to secrecy. I'm working on a present for the hubby for kind of like a Valentine's Day slash anniversary thing, but you gotta be quiet about it. I'll show you. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so you guys know I play D&D &D with my boys and also Magic. Um, and there's a thing that my hubby and I kind of share together. And it's kind of the love of things that, you know, I, I guess you could say science fiction, fantasy, magical, you know, those kind of theme-oriented like movies or books and such like that. Well, he's got a soft spot for Tolkien, and especially the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, and I had an idea for Valentine's Day, but our the entire week uh, weekend of Valentine's Day, we had that big freeze um, that really affected everything as far as plans wise. You know, for a good week. So I ended up putting this off um, and just because we had to deal with, with life. Um, and then I thought I would do a little bit more. Well, with D&D, &D, um, I've gotten to find out about this particular company and it's Wormwood. Um, I have a love and so does my hubby for things that are handmade or crafted with woods, especially really interesting, nice woods, or just the craftsmanship alone. Um, and these guys have really good craftsmanship going on, and they play with interesting woods. So, that would be the company there. All right, so this is an interesting wood right here. And they burnt, they had a uh, person that was doing Elvis translation and I just couldn't help it uh, and they said you know basically it's like if you're interested in this you know you could have it translated and just supply the uh, the quote you wanted to have translated and since he's a big Tolkien fan and Lord of the Rings fan it just fit perfectly so there's that, but if I could tell him what the quote is, a lot of times he would probably forget. So it led me to go the next next step. All right, now I don't know if I can do this one hand. No, no. Okay, good. Hold on. All right, they got some really strong <laughs> magnets here. here. I'll show you briefly, and then I'll open it up again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to put down the phone each time because I'm holding it by the end. Okay, so. Inside here is meant to be a dice vault, but hubby does not play D&D, &D, so it is a perfect size to put a pin in. So I've got a pin on order from this guy who I love. He makes really cool wooden pins uh, on eBay, and I've ordered these before, like a, the guy who did... Um, all the woodwork on our cabinets in the studio and the house. We got him a really cool looking pin and such like that. Uh, so I've got a pin on order to go into this spot. And what I thought I would do is some kind of fun little resin thing on the bed of this that the pen rests on top of. And then of course with the lid, I thought I would, yes, do some more res resin work, of course. But I would also place in there in English what the quote was. So here's the quote. It's really mushy, I have to warn you. But I decided, I did it in like three different typefaces. And I decided, I think I'm going to do this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this one. So, yeah, I think that's nice and mushy. I think that'll work out fine. So next up is I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to try and singe the edges a little bit with flames. <laughs> Hopefully a little bit and I don't have to reprint this, but we're going to give it a go. Ugh. 
<laughs> Excuse me, I just... <laughs> that was rude. <laughs> All right. I always find when I do things that are going into something to print out a super fine line, and that helps me out a lot. Now, granted, this edge is rounded. And I don't know how much the flame's gonna take off. So, we might have to burn a little bit, blow it out, burn a little bit more, blow it out, things like that until we can get the right shape. So I kind of measured it in the house and of course I didn't have a very good ruler. Okay, so it seems to be good on the width or I should say the length and the width fits in there nicely. So it's good and snug. So all I have to do I think is just round off the little bits and such. All right, now to burn this without Burn the house down. All right, we're gonna try and do this <laughs> over the kitchen sink in the studio. Uh, the wind's blowing too much outside, so I couldn't get the flame to behave. So, okay, hopefully the smoke alarm doesn't go off. Crap. Ah! <laughs> All right, let me open the wind up. <laughs> go out. All right, we'll try this again. Hopefully I don't need to print out another one. Wants to keep burning. Like, no. All right, so I'm here in the <laughs> kitchen over the metal sink, so that way if I have to drop this, it's uh, safe. And worst case scenario, I just run water over it. <laughs> and uh, every <laughs> studio is protected, house is protected. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I don't hyperventilate. <laughs> <laughs> Things we do for love. <laughs> This is already looking pretty cool. I get the fingers away just a little bit more. It seems like it needs a couple times for you to blow it out for it to stop. Maybe three times. Woo. All right, that one was trying to get outside the sink. Bad paper. Okay. So have you guys done anything like this where you burn the edges or try to make the edges look worn out? <laughs> I must sound really funny right now. A really cool way to make your paper look really, really weathered is to, um, first off, if you can dye it with some kind of like I don't know, like a tea dye or something like that where it just stains it a little bit. Coffee will do that. You let it dry, you wrinkle it up, open it up, wrinkle it up again, open it up, and just do it multiple times. And it gets really super soft and you have those super fine wrinkles in it. That's one way to make it look very old.
<laughs> All right, let's see. I think that might work rather nicely. Hang on, let me go get the box lid. All right, so I got the box lid here. I'm just gonna plop this into place for now. I think that'll look really nice. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing in this case is I might pre-paint the bottom with a color, like with acrylic paints. Um, and then I'm gonna seal this paper so that way it doesn't create bubbles in the resin. Yep, that's definitely what I think I'm gonna do. All right, let's get busy. All right, first things first, I've got some uh, Mod Podge here that I'm gonna put a coat on both sides of this and let that start drying while I paint the lid on this piece. Um, in fact, I'm even thinking I need to probably paint the base of it as well. So yeah, let's get busy. Eee, I should have warned you. <laughs> You're going in the air. Sorry. All right. So the reason for me painting this quote or on the paper is that um, paper is really porous. So when you add resin to it, um, it's going to want to breathe and it releases bubbles. So by doing so, you'll get bubbles in your resin. Not good. So this is an inexpensive brush, so it ends up getting destroyed by the Mod Podge. I'm not that worried about it. But um, if you ever like embed uh, clippings or photos or things like that, that's like a paper product, uh, you may want to seal it. Mod Podge is one of the ways. Um, other people have used um, spray sealers and such like that. But I've had success with Mod Podge, so, and I have some on hand. That's why I'm using it. All right, I'm gonna do just a little bit of that. I'm gonna brush off excess off my brush. Let that dry, and I'll flip it over and do the next, the other side. Okay, so we're gonna paint the inside of the lid. And what I thought I would do is do a combination of a bronze with a dark brown. And granted, the dark brown is going to kind of blend into the back, but having the, um, the bronze in there will kind of sparkle it up a little bit. Now, granted, you're only going to see it around the edges. It'll just add a little something to it because I have something planned that's going to be special for the bottom. I love these kind of bottles where you can get just a couple drips out of it instead of having to scoop it out with your brush. Because if you need a little bit more, it's not a problem to add a little drip to it. Yeah, I think that'll do nicely. Now, I always put my paints on a plate, and the reason for that is... I don't want to have uh, spillage or me contaminating the paint um, if I do it directly uh, from the jar. Let's see, are you guys in the camera? Let me zoom in quite a bit and I will just see what I can do to keep this working. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Mod Podge and resin. This will give me that opportunity. Um, I did a piece for my mom and dad. They had lost a lot of um, photos because of uh, Harvey and also a flood from two years before. So they were concerned about some of these ones that were left over and were kind of cherished. And so I created some panels that they could hang up in their new house at the time that had some of these photos in it. And I went ahead and embedded them into resin. And, you know, some of them were in groups of like 
my sister and I growing up. Uh, some of them were in uh, groups of my mom and dad when they were young and them growing up, you know, as far as their marriage and such. Uh, one was from my daddy growing up as a child. And then the other one was uh, my mother growing up as a child. So they all had their own little themes to them. And what I did is I took the panel and kind of did... Uh, some acrylic paints in the background. I picked a couple colors and kind of loosely brushed them. You know how I like to do that and show the brush strokes and such. And and then I just laid out the photos in kind of a collage form. Some of them overlapped, some of them didn't. Um, and I coated them both, both sides with Mod Podge. And for the most part, they did great. There was one thing I forgot to do and that was so I got the front really good I got the back side really good what I didn't get was the edge of the photos and so especially like on the corners you saw a couple little bubbles on the corners now it was so minor that it wasn't really an issue but I know they're there and I learned a lesson you know Definitely get your edges with um, when it comes to anything, especially thick paper. Hang on, concentrating. I'm going around the corner. All right. So, granted, it's brown going on brown. Not super exciting. But also not distracting too bad. And I think that'll do nicely. So it has a little bit of a bronze, bronzy sheen. And I think that will do well. Is, is this dry yet? I'm just gonna lay that on top and I think that'll do well with the paper. So, yay. Okay. So this is the bottom side where the pin's gonna go. Now granted, most of this is gonna get covered up by resin and I've got something special in mind but it's also going to seal the wood so i'm not going to have problems with the bubbles and such man i almost need a spotlight going in there if i'm having a hard time you guys must be having a real hard time so the pen i found is super cool it's um this guy does turning with woods, and it's a really pretty burl wood. And the metal work that he used for the top and the little grip, you know, the part that hangs onto your shirt or the clasp. I'm, I'm having a hard time with words while I paint. <laughs> uh, has got a, a dragon on it, and it's really cool. And it was funny, too, because I pulled up his page, and it was the first one on the page, and it was like, ooh. And then I went ahead and went through all the other ones he had, but I kept going back to it. And it's like, well, don't fight it, Claire. Just go with that one. Okay. So my paint's dry, and now it's ready for the next step. So this is what I thought I would do, is I have to adhere this to that and also cover my edges. So why not do both at the same time? So what I'm gonna do here is put a layer of Mod Podge on the bottom and then put the paper down there and then put a layer of Mod Podge on top of it. So basically it's like decoupage. I met an artist recently who is from Acapulco and uh, I went down to Rhonda's and uh, she Rhonda's at RK3 Designs and she was having a class there and I met an artist that um, does a lot of decoupage work and she's from Acapulco and she was a delight. Oops, I'm about to do something. It might be a boo-boo. All right, let me focus on this. Okay, so this is the way it's read. So I want to make sure that when... 
Let's see, how would we do this? I guess flip it over or open it up and it looks like that. That's maybe that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. Now right now it's super curly because I don't have anything on it. Trying to get it in a good position. And I think that'll do just fine. Alright, so what I'm going to do is smoosh this down. It's a technical term. Smoosh! And then I'm going to put a layer of the Mod Podge on top of it. It might bring up some of the paint from the bottom, but I'm not worried about it because that will also kind of give it an antique -y kind of look, which is kind of cool. So we're just going to go with it. All right, you stay down. Yes, I talk to my artwork sometimes. <laughs> Hopefully most of the time I am very kind to it. <laughs> All right. We are good. All right. Get rid of some of the excess. I think I might do just do a very thin layer around the edges since I went out ahead and went up the edges a little bit just to kind of seal in the wood. I believe they cut these little sections out with a CNC machine. If I get any resin on the sides, everything will be good. All right, and this stuff dries clear, so we are okay. All right, now I need to put that away and let it dry. All right, I'm going to zoom you in because we got to get busy. All right, so what I've got here is I've got some resin already mixed up because I did this technique on something else as well. This is Quick Coat, and I will talk to you more about Quick Coat if I get a have to hustle a little bit. But... It is a fast working time resin, and you do need a hustle. I mean, I got usually a 10 minute working time with it. Uh, in fact, I've got three cups that I've poured and or mixed colors in, and my other cup had slightly more in the cup, and it is already solid. And if I got a little bit of time after this, I will show you. But I mixed them all at the same time. Alright, so what I'm trying to do here is have a variety of colors. These are all chameleons, but have a variety of colors because it'll look more interesting. I may have to go in there with some with alcohol. Hopefully it'll clean off. Ooh, even these cups are starting to get hot. Okay. Alright, need to hurry. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just kind of going to mix these guys together kind of like this. Just do a little loop-de-loop -loop in here. Ah! Now i got to tilt. Like soon. Okay, let me get this bottom part at least. I'm hoping you guys are in camera. 
I just want to get to edge to edge for right now, okay? Which I think I have, yes. Okay, get down to the bottom here. I'm gonna flip one of these cups over so I get a little puddle of resin. Come on, come down. Ooh, this is gonna be close. Because I wanna try a fun technique on this. If it'll behave. Oh no. I really don't wanna mess this up. Okay, let me get the heat gun and see if I can. I don't know, hopefully I don't screw it up. It's also wood too, so I gotta be mindful not to burn the wood. Come on, just go edge to edge for me. The good news is, is I will be doing a technique that will cause texture. So that will help. Okay. I'm gonna have to let it settle down. This is wild. Okay. Wonder if I almost need to pull this section out. Oh, geez. You see how that's doing that? Crap. Okay. So I'm going to panic and see if I can scoop this out. some sanding in mind how I have to do crap well sometimes you got a plan sometimes resin has a plan <laughs> ah, no all right I will get this right I promise I'm just trying to get rid of most of it that I can before it sets up too hard and uh, makes it impossible. At some point, I'm going to need to stop and let it level out if it will. And smooth that down and then see if I can get him with a paper towel on the sides. Good. Okay, you guys are getting a lot more failures lately than you are successes. This is not good. may have to oil this again on the sides and that's okay mm -hmm. I may have to get in here with a Dremel
my first instinct was to do one project, go in and then do mix another batch and do the second project. But then had a second thought of, oh, I'll just do both of them real quick because I'm used to the art coat and having a long working time. And mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's good to listen to your instincts. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get it off the little bit of lip so that way mechanism wise with the, uh, with the magnets on each side that the lid closes down real well because we don't want to hurt that at all. Okay. I will make this work. Let's see if I can gently cover some of this up. I had a brush available that was an inexpensive little throwaway brush, and that's what I'm using now to, wow, this stuff is almost hard. Just trying to get the big bumps out of here. Especially off the sides. Well, shoot. <laughs> Did I get off my stick? Okay, I'm getting off the stick. All right, I'm gonna let that cure completely and I will mix up another batch and try again. All right, we got attempt number two going on here. So I've got some more of the quick coat mixing up right now. And this time I just did grumpy because I've got a little bit of a couple of the other colors in there. Um, so, and I did get some resin on the side. I know I'm going to cover over it. So I think what I'm going to do is just put the chameleon only on the bottom. And then when I go over it to cover it up with texture at that point, I'll hit it with a second uh, coat. So that way uh, this texture trick that I'm gonna do on it won't uh, interfere with the sides. So I'm gonna try to carefully pour it on the bottom. All right, and that should be, I'm gonna do a little bit more. That should be enough. I'm a righty, so that's why I was turning it around. And I've got a um, mold here handy. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour the rest of this in here because this stuff sets up super fast. And since I've only got one color, what I did is I dusted my mold with um, some gold in some spots. And then it will have the grumpy in the other spots. And don't be surprised if your mold smokes if you've got a lot of resin in there. And this one does indeed have a lot of resin. Let's hope it doesn't smoke too much. So, and sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll kind of pinch it around just to make sure the resin moves. And there seems to be enough for another mold. And I had a backup. Let's try that. This one is not going to fill it up, but that's okay. It'll be enough to give it a really pretty first coat, or first layer, I should say. All right, now what I also want to do is make a little puddle so I can test where my resin's at. And so I put a little puddle on the parchment paper on the side. I know I got you guys zoomed in. I was mixing such a small amount and I only had the one cup 
to measure on as far as mixing. So I knew it was going to have some extra resin. So that's why I had the molds handy, just in case. All right. That looks like I got good coverage on this. Let me get it up real quick, get rid of some bubbles. This particular resin, the heat process, process does accelerate the curing process as well. So if you put a lot of heat on it, mm -hmm, you're going to have hard resin in no time. I'm going to hit a little spot on the side. I don't know if uh, I just got resin on it or if it's something else. But I figured since I'm here, I'll go ahead and touch it. And what I'll probably do on this guy anyway is sand it on the sides very carefully and uh, make sure I'm, I'm nice and clean too. <laughs> and then probably oil it up or something like that and put a light finish on it because I don't want to ruin the wood. The wood's really pretty. I have to find out what kind of wood this was. Something on the bottom? No. Okay, I'm paranoid. All right. Hurry and cure at least a little bit. So we're waiting for the sticky stage to proceed to the next bit. And uh, what I've got over here is my little blob. And what we're going to do here is literally I've got a popsicle stick handy. And we could touch it and see if it gets to the really st stringy stage. It's getting there. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. But it's not there yet enough. So I'm going to come back to it in a few minutes and continue. All right, so the resin is done. And you know what? I'm just going to show you. So I have a mixture here of a little bit of water. And a little bit of Dawn dish soap, and I've got some bubbles made. And I'm gonna put some a layer of bubbles on top of the resin, and it's gonna create a really cool texture. Now I know I just mentioned water, which is taboo when it comes to resin, but because this is a quick setting resin, it's gonna leave a lovely texture behind that will also work with a little dragon pen. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Now I just heard that hubby is on his way home, so I best get moving because I need to put this, put these bubbles on here and then put it away so that it can set up and come out here very sneaky like and check on it. So literally what I'm doing here is laying the bubbles into the resin. Now do not do this with resins that take longer to cure. Um, like for example, I use a stone coat art coat a lot. Um, that would be a, that would not work out very well. Um, but like UV resins and this, uh, quick coat, it works really good with. Erica and I just got through showing Rhonda over at RK3 Designs this texture. And she's trying to work it out where she can incorporate into countertop designs, which will be awesome. All right. So that is simply what we need to do here. And I'm going to put this sucker away so it can finish curing. And I'll bring you guys back in to um, see the unveiling. Let's see if I can get that guy in there a little bit more. Now, I'm not worried about them being uniform if they're various sizes. Um, I think that'll actually work to the better. So, woo. see you tomorrow. All right, I got to show you this. Super happy with the way it came out. I had to check on it while the hubby was out here, so I kind of had to come in kind of incognito, you know, really quiet like. But um, it's got some bubbles on one end. And then it fades out, and then it's got bubbles on the other end. I am super happy with this. So don't the, look, 
Doesn't that look amazing? All right. So what I decided to do is I'm going to add a little touch of silver to the peaks of this just to kind of emphasize the texture. So hang on. All right. So I'm going to use my uh, Just Resin, and this is aluminum. I've got the bright gold. Yeah, remember this is the, the famous one that got a resin together. <laughs> so I've got bright gold on the top, and I've got aluminum on the bottom. But um, I'm going to crack this open carefully. And it's a really pretty silver powder. And I will commonly use the top if I'm going to do any kind of dusting. Just tap my finger on that, pick up some silver. And I am super close, so I'm just going to barely touch. Just kind of emphasize the shape a little bit. I'm not worried about it being complete coverage. But just like a little bit. I get a little bit more on my finger. Let's see, we'll get to the other end carefully. Dab it around, pick up a little bit of the highlight spots. Let's see. It's one of those times where you feel like your finger is like huge when you're working in small spaces like this. And sometimes what you could do is just take it and go horizontally across the top and it'll pick it up like that. It's kind of like a form of dry brushing. All right, so see how that just added just a little bit? Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, let me zoom you back out. Boink. Here we go. Then, got some resin in a cup and this is just clear. just to kind of seal this bottom real good. Mental note, should have had a popsicle stick close by. Let's see, is this one gooey? No, good. Just so I can get out of there. Let's see, do I need any more than that? I'm going to do a little more. So this is self-leveling, so it'll go into all those little holes and craters and fill those up so it'll be nice and level. Okay, I'm going to sit there for a second. A torch. Really quickly torch that out. It's going to heat it up and it's also going to flow a little bit. And I'm just going to tilt it ever so carefully. Just so it touches sides. That's how the bottom is going to look. That is super nice. Very simple. A little bit of texture. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, now for the other part. I'm not adding anything to this resin. It's just going to be clear. Right. I was like scraping my cup because I don't want it to drip off. 
on to the side there. Same thing as before, just going to gently touch the sides. Come back after a little bit and torch it if I need to. But I think we're good. Ooh, I kind of want to put them together, but I don't. <laughs> All right, hopefully that pin will come in soon and I'll show you the full thing. So the pin hasn't arrived yet, but this is another pin that this gentleman has made. But uh, this one's much bigger. It's, it's, I think it's called one of his cigar pins. Uh, so it's got a very wide uh, barrel. You can see it's well used. Uh, wide barrel, whereas the other one isn't as wide. Um, but I couldn't help myself. I had to at least show it with a pin in there. Um, but yeah, I think I am super happy with how this turned out. When this comes out, it's just a little something extra. And I kind of like the fact that it's only in this area and in this area. So that really turned out nicely. And then that little bit of um, it picking up the paint really kind of aged the paper nicely here as well. So yeah, I think you'll be happy with that. And a nice satisfactory of a click right there. Ooh, can't wait for the pin. Later, y'all. All right, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And check the links in the description below for my Amazon store where I put all the products I use. Um, I'll also see if I can put a, product, uh, a link in there for Wormwood as well. So in case you are one that is interested in all things D&D and gaming and things like that, you can check them out. So, oh, and uh, all the colors I use, I get them from Mars Till Death. There's also a coupon code. Ooh, I can't wait to see what he thinks. He's not one for video, so sorry. He's not gonna get on the camera. <laughs> Later, y'all.